Hey, let's go to the weekend check-in. And this uh, segment is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton. Hilton for the stay. I'm going to list off some teams here, and then I'm going to tell the fan bases how you should be feeling right now. Okay? Are we ready? I'm really excited about this. No, hold on. There we go. Georgia. Let's start with Georgia. Okay, Georgia, um, that wasn't very good. 14 to 3. However, Georgia fans, you know how you should feel right now? You should feel fine. You should feel fine. Because your schedule is very weak. You're not getting threatened in the East. At least I don't think so. I mean, look at the pillow fight in the swamp. I don't mean to you know throw shade out there, but Utah handled Florida. And then Florida handled Tennessee. Is the East that tough? Probably not. Probably not. Um, that's why you should you should feel fine. You've won 20 straight games now, 36 of their last 37. They host UAB this week at Auburn next week. And I know Auburn's 3-0, but like, come on. Come on. So, Georgia, you're down 14-3 at home last week. And you know what? You should feel fine. You should feel fine. I think they have the easiest path to the playoff. All right, let's move on. How about Michigan? Michigan fans. Now, I got a lot of people thinking that I threw shade at Michigan and J.J. McCarthy on Monday when I suggested that we all imagine a scenario in which Ohio State was the team that was in a 7-6 game in the middle of the second quarter with Bowling Green with their quarterback throwing three interceptions. I stand by that. I absolutely stand by that. We would eviscerate Ohio State if that was the case. And we don't do that with Michigan, in part because we know their style of play. They do this. They don't just blow people out by 90 points. It's not going to be high flying. We've seen J.J. McCarthy at times you know, throw interceptions, and it seems to be okay. And we've seen him bounce back from that. We're going to get Jim Harbaugh back. But, but, with what's going on in the Big Ten East, namely Penn State and Ohio State, I would feel antsy if I were you, Michigan fans, because the one thing that will derail your season faster than anything else is if J.J. McCarthy starts to turn the ball over. So that's why I would be antsy. I know you're going to run the football fine. I really do. I'm pretty confident that the defense is going to play really well. I think the one unknown is how efficient can J.J. play? Now, he was really good a year ago until late, obviously, the TCU game. It got a little bit loose. And guess what? They lost. So I would be a little antsy right now if I was a Michigan fan based off of the fact that my quarterback threw three interceptions and I've watched him on tape. They were not good. He's got to play better than what he played on Saturday. I'm interested to see how much better uh, they will play as a team and efficient they will play as a team with Jim Harbaugh back as head coach, and we'll see. They don't have a ranked team on their schedule until they face Penn State, at least uh, uh, not ranked until um, right now. They play at Penn State November 11th. Similar easy schedule to Georgia, and yet I'm more antsy if I'm a Michigan fan. Why? Because my quarterback just threw three bad interceptions, and that's the one thing that would derail this season, in particular in the Big Ten East. You cannot lose two games in the Big Ten and be okay. You won't go to the playoff. The only way that they lose twice, in my estimation, is if J.J. McCarthy turns the ball over. So Michigan fans, feel a little antsy. Feeling a little antsy. How about Texas. How about Texas? Texas feeling big in their britches, right? Since 2018, nobody in America has played in more one-score games than Texas. So you know what, Texas fans? You know how you should feel right now? Even after that big win over Alabama and Tuscaloosa, which, by the way, doesn't quite feel the same after what they did at UAB, but you know how you should feel, Longhorn fans? Forever cautious. Forever cautious because your team, like it or not, plays to the level of their competition constantly. Constantly. Did again last week. 10-10 against Wyoming. I heard some people on Twitter, and they've got to be Texas fans, being like, I don't know, Wyoming's a pretty gritty team. You can't. You can't claim that you've arrived and that you're back because you beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa and then say, oh, Wyoming's kind of gritty. 
No, that's that. That's not how this works. So Texas fans, forever cautious, forever cautious. They always have the talent advantage in the Big 12, and yet they constantly find themselves in games where they're like down a score in the fourth quarter at, I don't know, name the school, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Texas fans. You've lived it for how many years? Last year, you beat the doors off of Oklahoma. You got to like, our quarterback is back. We've arrived. And guess what? Because he had gotten injured, they went to Texas Tech and lost, and they continued to play one-score games. And inevitably, you put yourself in that position that often, you will lose some of them. You will lose. And if they continue to do that this year, they will lose a game that they shouldn't. So forever cautious is how I would be viewing this team if I was a Texas fan. They've got to find some sort of internal motivation. And I even hesitate to use the term motivation because it's not motivation. It's a standard. Texas has got to find a leadership group on the team. And by the way, this can't be the coaches. This has got to be the players. I'm talking to you, Texas players. You've got to have an internal standard where you don't play to the level of your competition. It can't be just about the win or loss. It has to be about your standard. You see, people ask me about culture in programs all the time. Like, oh, who's, who's got good culture? Who's got bad culture? What coaches build great culture and coaches don't build great culture? Coaches don't build culture. Listen to me very carefully. Coaches do not build culture. Coaches set expectations and have rules. That's what a coach does. Sets expectations and he has rules that the team has to abide by. Culture is when a group of leaders on that team within the team, within the locker room, have an internal expectation and standard that goes above what the coach's expectation and rules are, and then that becomes the standard by which everyone else is held accountable. That's a culture. It can be in the way you carry yourself, in the way you play, in the way you prepare. Culture is held and built and established by those within the locker room. So this is a player issue at Texas. Hold yourselves accountable to a new standard. Don't play to the level of competition. So fan base, guess what? Forever cautious. Florida State. Let's go to Florida State. How about that game last weekend? Barn burner. Barn burner, excuse me. And really, Florida State got fortunate that they won this game. I would be very anxious if I was Florida State. Very anxious because of the way the season has gone. I've been, I'm anxious if I'm a Florida State fan because you took me up really high with a dominant second half against LSU, which all of us praised and rightly so. And then you kind of took us down like a roller coaster. We're like, and you took us all the way down to like, can we beat BC? Like, please. Even when BC had every opportunity in the world to win that game. And meanwhile, on the high part, I thought to myself, if I'm an FSU fan, we're fine at Clemson. Oh, we got Clemson. We're clearly the best team of the ACC. We're a playoff contender. Now we went down the roller coaster. We barely won at Boston College. And I'm thinking to myself like, oh, now I've got a lot of anxiety about going to Death Valley, a place that we basically don't win. So, so that's why I'm anxious. Like, which is the real Florida State? Which is the one I'm going to get? By the way, copy and paste what I just said about the Texas players for the Florida State players. Hold an internal standard. And it's hard for college kids. It's really hard. They're distracted. They go to class. They've got personal issues, a lot of them. And not in a bad way. I'm just saying, like, personal lives. So getting kids to concentrate to the level of detail and execute the level of detail necessary to hold a really high standard week in and week out, almost impossible in college football, almost impossible. So Knowles fans, this is kind of like an, Oh crap feeling. Oh crap. We thought this was going to be a lot easier than now it's turning out to be. And now I'm anxious because we got to go face Clemson. And what I thought was going to be an easy win. I don't really know now based on the performance last week. All right, let's go to Tennessee. Tennessee. uh, Last season was such a high for Tennessee. It really was. First double-digit win season since 2007. That was the Fulmer era. They did everything right, and everything came together. And 
Hendon Hooker and Jalen Hyatt and and Tillman, Darnell Wright, the offensive line, even the, the way the defense played at times was was good. And you know what? You know how you should feel, Tennessee fan? Duped. You got duped. You got totally duped. Because guess what? You thought that the program had elevated to that point where you were an upper echelon SEC program. Not the case. You had some upper echelon talent. And there's a huge difference. Huge. Joe Milton is not anywhere nearly as good of a quarterback as Hendon Hooker. That's just a fact. And I like Joe Milton a lot. The wide receiver group is not Jalen Hyatt and company like last year. The defense has not been up to par. You got duped into feeling like your program had arrived at a level in which they had not arrived at. A few players took you to a mountaintop and duped you into thinking that the entire program was on that mountaintop, and it's just not the case. And now when they walk out the door, here we are. And you know what? This is even more evidence of how amazing a job Nick Saban has done for 15 years and what Kirby Smart has done and even what Dabo Sweeney did for a number of years. It's insanely hard to have great team after great team after great team and constantly put yourself on the level of the elite in your conference or the country. It's almost impossible. That's why it's really hard. And this is the evidence of that. This is the evidence of that. Tennessee fans were duped. We were all duped into believing Tennessee was something that they were not. And now a Florida team, which by the way, was pretty average, copy and paste the week one drubbing at Utah when Utah had like nine guys out from their starting lineup, including their starting quarterback. And then Tennessee goes to the swamp and gets housed. Wasn't close. Wasn't close. We were all duped and Tennessee fans, you were duped as well. Last one, Alabama. All right. You're not going to like this Bama fans, but if I were you, this is like panic panic and everyone's going to take this screenshot and get all upset and you know what just hear me out this team is different you and I both know that Bama fan this is not what you have been in the last five or six years since the offense shifted and has been more high pro uh, profile and, and high powered we both know that okay the offensive line has some problems in pass protection not what you have been at wide receiver and clearly not what you have been at quarterback. Okay. Now, if you've listened to this show for any amount of time, you know that I still believe in Alabama and in the quick cycle that is college football. Now with the transfer portal, Alabama is not done. Nick Saban is not done. Okay. However, If you're going to have a slide this year, you know why you should be panicked? Because it's like, not like this. It's like, no, 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 no. If we're going to go out this year, we can't go out like this. We can't go out losing to a former assistant in Steve Sarkeesian in Texas. Although, you know what? It's like, "Ah, I mean, they're really good and they've been building for a while and you can go, not Kiffin, not like this. I'm panicked if I'm a Bana fan. I'm like, I can't. You know why you should be panicked? It's because it's Ole Miss coming to town. And not that Ole Miss is that great. It's just like, no, no, not like this. Not like this. Like, okay, we're not going to be great this year. Maybe we could build. Maybe we could still win the West. You know, and we gave the blueprint of what Alabama should be. But dear God, please, no, not Kiffin. Kiffin's not going to put the nail in in our coffin this year. Like, that's why I'm panicked if I'm a Bama fan because it's Lane Kiffin, of all the, of like all the people and the tweeting and and the and incessant like oh he's the goat oh toughest place to win ever and all this stuff and it's like he's setting you up and that's why I would be panicked if I was a Crimson Tide fan because like not not him why does it have to be him not this week not this team why do we have to play this t- no no please please God. Bama fans, might be time to panic this week.
Thank you for watching the Joel Clashio YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.